today on Divorce Court. I'm here because I think Chris is cheating on me. I've never cheated on her and I haven't cheated on her. Mr. really needs to show me more respect. He's a lousy provider. I support everything. She is the only one currently working. Chris has got to step up and be a man, get a job, and act like he wants his family. I can see myself spending the rest of my life with Misty. I want the judge to tell Chris that if he doesn't step up, I'm gone. I'm out of here. The Lord's Court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Misty Manning and Christopher Curtis. The two of you have been together for two years. You are here on a Before Your Vows. You love each other, you want to be with each other, but you're not quite sure whether or not you should get married. So you've come before me, you've taken my compatibility test and given me your license with permission to tear it up should I find the union ill-advised. Ms. Manning, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me why you love him, but why you're not so sure you should marry him? Your Honor, I'm here today because I think my boyfriend Chris is cheating on me. Um, when I was in the hospital with pneumonia, he texted his ex-girlfriend asking her to come and see him. Um, when she asked him, well, what about Misty? He said, well, she don't know won't hurt. Um, he texted another one of his exes asking her, telling her he still had feelings for her, wanting to know if she still had feelings for him. Um, could they get back together? Um, there was a time where there was a lady that texted the phone or called the phone and we were in bed, he was in the bathroom, and I answered it. Well, when I answered it, she said, oh, really? And I said, can I ask who this is? She said, why don't you ask Chris who I am? Hung up. So when he came out of the bathroom, I asked him. He says he don't know who it was, he's never seen that number before, but I've recognized that number several times on his phone. Mr. Curtis, that was a whole lot in one fell swoop. Do you have a response to any of that? Your Honor, I never cheated on her, and when the lady called my phone, Misty pretended to be, or text my phone, I should say, Misty pretended to be me, mm -hmm. just to gain information from her. Mm -hmm. In regards to me texting an ex, yes, I did text an ex, and I did ask her to come to the hospital, uh, but at that point in time, I didn't know if Misty was going to live or die, and it wasn't for me to cheat, uh, cheat on her. I was needing somebody to confide in. You mean to tell me you got your woman in the hospital, you don't know if she's going to live or die, and you turn to an ex-girlfriend for support? Yes, this Your is Honor. what you're telling me? Yes, Your Honor. How much sense does that make? At the point in time, it made a lot of sense, but now it doesn't make any. There, well, no, there, there's growth right there. <laughs> Mr. Curtis, what is your primary concern with respect to this relationship? My primary concern in this relationship is that I'm tired of her accusing me of cheating on her and her not respecting me. <laughs> well, that was short and sweet. Ms. Manning, can you get, uh, tell me any other reasons why you believe that he's cheating on you? Your Honor, you? he's always telling lies. Um, he's, he, he is a pathological liar. He lies about everything. He don't... He, one time he said he was going to go and apply for a job. He lied. He didn't go and apply for a job. He went and donated plasma. And when he had an interview, he told the interview people that I was in the hospital having a miscarriage. I was never pregnant. Did you do that, Mr. Curtis? I That's didn't go. a yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, are you unemployed now? Yes, Your Honor. How long have you been unemployed? Uh, three months. Okay. Did you tell her you were going to get a job and had a job interview when you didn't? No, I did go apply for the job and I did have an interview, I just didn't make the interview. And you didn't make the interview because? I was donating plasma and the time that... <laughs> you just didn't want to get the job, right? Because there, there, there's no time frame in which you have to donate plasma. If you got a job interview, you go. You You're don't. Right. It's not like the plasma people, the blood people tackled you on the way to the interview and dragged you in and tapped your vein. You made a decision not to go to the interview and to give plasma instead, correct? Yes, ma'am. There you go. We're getting growth over here. Mr. Curtis, do you respect her? Yes, I respect her. Uh-huh. How come so many lies and so many, you know, I'm, I'm going to get a job, but don't get a job. Got an ex coming to the hospital while she's there. Why so disrespectful? Because, uh, I guess I'm taking out what happened to me in my past relationship out on her. What happened in your past relationship? Uh, past relationships, I've been cheated on. I, like, I've done everything else for the person that I was with and didn't get any recognition for it. So, therefore, being with Misty, I take that out on her. You take advantage of her before she can take advantage of you. I guess in a way, yes, yeah. Your Honor. I got that. Your Honor, one time he had stated that he went and applied for food stamps to try to financially help because he don't want to work 
and I'm the one that brings in all the money. I pay all the bills. Um, so I told him at least apply for food stamps. He lied and said, well, I don't know how to apply. And so I tried to help him. Well, he lied about applying for food stamps. He lied about going and getting a job because I've applied for the jobs online for him. And he's, I couldn't even get him to call and schedule an interview or check on the job after I applied for him. Is all that true? Yes. Your Honor, he's okay with being a, being a carny, a carnival worker. And I'm not okay with being a carny's wife. I'm not going to. That's the only job that this man wants to do. If there's a carnival in town, you'll work it? Is that what the... No, basically How it what, works? No, basically what it is is I've worked for carnivals for 10 years. Um, it's not something that I can just up and quit one day, you know, and not ever go back to it. She wants me to make money, but she wants me to do it her way. So, therefore, I, I've never worked a 9-to-5 job in my life, never. I've worked carnivals for the last 10 and a half years. Do you have to travel with them? Yes. From city to city? Yeah. And she doesn't want you to do that because she wants you home. Exactly. But if she wants me to make money, I don't see a problem with it. As mm -hmm. long as I'm sending right. her money at least every day or every week or whatever, I don't see... When he does work carnivals, does he send you money? No, Your Honor, he does not. That's a lie. And he is also fit, uh, lying because he said he's never worked a 9-to-5 job. When I got with this man, he was working at the Salvation Army in Tulsa where I was stranded at for a couple weeks. So if he's never worked a 9-to-5 job, how did he work that job? If I would have known then that he was going to be like this, I would have never took him back home with me. You took him back home I with you? I took him back from home with me yeah. from Oklahoma. How long did you know him before you took him back home with you? Not long, Your Honor. Give me a ballpark. Your Honor, probably... Three weeks. Small ballpark, huh? Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Didn't, it, didn't anybody, when you brought him home, say, hey, do yes, you really Your know Honor. this dude? Yes. Uh, my, my parent did. Um, my father did. He, uh, he didn't like the idea of me bringing him home anyway, but I thought I was in love, and he couldn't tell me nothing better at the time. What was on your mind when you left the state with a woman after no one or three weeks? Honestly, Your Honor, I, I don't know. Um... I fell in love with her. Uh, that's all I can really say. Well, if this is what love looks like, <laughs> I'd rather be alone. Your Honor, this man has a very bad anger problem. Um, when we get in arguments or fights, he is quick to call me a bitch, um, quick to call me fat and put me down, quick to tell me he doesn't love me no more. Mr. Curtis? So, Ms. Manning, you say he's verbally abusive. Why don't you tell me about that? Your Honor, this man has a very bad anger problem. Um, when we get in arguments or fights, he is quick to call me a bitch, um, quick to call me fat and put me down, quick to tell me he doesn't love me no more. Has he been like that throughout the relationship, or has this developed over time? Just started. Just started how long ago? Probably six months. Do you know why? Do you know what's changed? Your Honor, I don't. Um, I know that, like, when I put him out, I'll tell him to go. He's got to get out of my apartment. He'll get so mad, he'll punch holes in my walls. He, um, there was a couple nights about a week ago where he knocked my coffee table over. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. The police officers got called. Um, they 86'd him out of there. He ended up leaving. I took him back. We were at my dad's when we first came to Arkansas. We were at my dad's, and this man ended up getting in an argument with me, calling me fat, telling me I was worthless, putting holes in my dad's walls. So he had to step in, kicked him off the property, told him to leave. Mr. Curtis, are you shrinking at all over there? Do you, are you starting to feel smaller and smaller? Yes, Your Honor, yeah, I am. I'm glad, because that means that you, you're conscious. Now, Mr. Curtis, do you admit to being verbally abusive? And if so, how did that develop as a lifestyle for you? Yes, I do admit to being verbally abusive, but it's... I don't do... When she starts yelling, I get irate. So, therefore, I lose my temper very quickly. And, yes, I have called her names. I admit that, and I regret that. And no sooner than I say it do I apologize to her for it. I mean, when we fight, we do fight. I've never laid hands on her, but I have broken our stuff and I have put holes in our wall. I'll admit that. And since you don't work, you don't have the money to replace them, so that puts the burden on her to replace those items you broke, correct? You're right, it does. And I, that doesn't give me right to do it. Mm -hmm. But I have fixed everything that I've put a hole in. Do you know why she's always yelling at you? Because I don't do nothing. There you go! Yeah. 
Does it ever occur to you that the appropriate response to her being mad at you about that kind of stuff is to, like, man up as opposed to holler at her? Yes, it, it is. However, you rejected that notion because... Honestly, I really don't have an answer for that, Your Honor. This is a before your vows. I have to remind myself of that. Do you want to marry her? Yes, Your Honor, I do. I love her to death. How is it that you love her so much but can do nothing for her but hurt her? Honestly, Your Honor, I don't know. I, I don't try to hurt her. and I, That's never been my intention at all. But I you just... manage it quite a bit. And I, and I want you to try to connect the dots for me. You really, really love her, but this is how you treat her. How does that happen? Ms. Manning, at some point, I got to turn to you. This is a before your vows. You've told me he's verbally abusive, that he doesn't work, that he tears up your stuff, that you think he's cheating, brings over the ex when you're at the hospital, all of these things, yet you want to marry him. So I want you to take a hot second there and put your best words together so you can explain to me why it is you want to connect yourself in perpetuity to pain. He is a net negative in your life. He's emotionally harmful. He's tearing down who you are. He's tearing up your house. He's not contributing economically. He lies to you and he cheats on you. What would cause you to throw him out and keep going? Would you stay in a relationship with someone who refused to work? Tell us what you think at Facebook.com slash Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. So, Ms. Manning, I, I went through all of his behaviors as you recited them to me and asked you, why are you here on the before your vows? Because it seems to me that you want to attach yourself to pain. Tell me what I'm missing or where I'm wrong. Your Honor, I, want, I love this man, and I want him to get it together and be a man and respect me. But if he doesn't, I'm not going to stay with him. You have so far. You keep telling me you've thrown him out, you've thrown him out, you bring him back. What would cause you to throw him out and keep going? You know, Your Honor, I think it's just I can't let go of him for some reason. I love this man, and I, I see the change in him, but he's just not willing to do it. Mr. Curtis? Yes, Your Honor. Are you willing to change in order to become a man worthy of having her as his wife? Yes, Your Honor, I am willing to change. What are you going to do? I need, first off, I need to get a job. That's mm -hmm. the biggest one. Uh, I need to help more around the house. Mm -hmm. and you don't do that either? I do clean the house, but I don't clean it like she wants me to clean it, you know? Uh, but I do, cook, I do cook her dinner. I make sure she has dinner ready when she gets off of work. Every day. Not every day, at least three to four times out of the week. No, you're lying. The only Does she go to work every day? Yes, ma'am. But you don't feed her every day. It's not that I don't feed her every day. I'm, I don't slave over a hot stove every day, no. But at least three or four times out of the week, I do. And if the tables were turning, you were working all day, you'd expect your woman to have a meal for you every day. Not three or four days, but every honestly, day. Honestly, no, Your Honor. I wouldn't expect her to cook every day for me. Oh, that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. Uh, Ms. Manning, um, I'm going to give you an opportunity to give me a 30-second professional... Because right now, you know, all I'm wanting to do is buy you a bus ticket <laughs> and send you somewhere. So I want you to say something to me that would say, huh, this is a union I'd be worth fighting for. Ready, set, go. I don't, I don't even know, Your Honor. Um, I really... I mean, I don't feel like I should be fighting for it. I really don't, because I don't see him changing. I don't see anything, I mean, working out with us. Um, he don't want to work. We don't have no communication. When I ask him answers, he won't even tell me. He'll just say, I don't know, where the famous cop out there he always does about the not you, it's me. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really see anything coming about it, Your Honor. I don't, and I've tried. I've tried. I've cried to him. I've begged him, and I've talked to him like a woman, and he still refuses today to do anything. Mr. Curtis, you have 30 seconds to convince her that she shouldn't bounce you, as I'm going to recommend. I mean, like she said, we don't have any communication, and she's right, we don't. And when she does ask me questions, I, I can't give her an answer, but I do love her and I do care about her, 
And I'll do anything and everything it takes to keep her. That's, that's it? Yes, Your Honor. Got it. Now I'm gonna talk to you. Well, I'm gonna talk to you too. You may not have any fun, but I will. Which trait would definitely keep you from marrying your partner? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. I fully anticipate that you're going to leave here and be with him. He's done nothing for you. He is a net negative in your life. He's emotionally harmful. He's physically harmful, just tearing up your stuff. I don't, he doesn't put hands on you, but she, he's tearing down who you are. He's tearing up your house. He's not contributing economically. He lies to you and he cheats on you. I don't know what's going to make you go. <laughs> and he does it because he can. That's it, and he does it because he can. The side of you, whatever love he c c professes to have for you, does not stop him. It doesn't say, hold up. It doesn't make him, dag, she's working that hard. Let me at least make her a meal. It doesn't do anything. He does as much as he can, when he can, how he can, whatever he can, because he knows you'll take it. I hope you know you're better than that. I hope you believe that you can step on and step forward either with or without him, whether you have a man, it don't matter. It's better than being beat over the head with what you're not and how not good you are and he's cheating on you. He can bring home some disease. I mean, you don't know what he's doing. He lies to you. You know, if somebody verbally abuses you long enough, you become that little piece of nothing that they tell you that you are. Bit by bit, day by day, they make you smaller and smaller and less and less, and one day you'll look up and can't get out because you're so small, because he's convinced you of that. I don't know what's wrong with you, Mr. Curtis, but let me tell you what. You are going to get in life the whole lot of nothing that you give her. You got nothing to recommend you. You have no kindness, you have no love, you have no conscience, you, and, and you just, yeah, I did it, yeah, I did it. You don't even believe that you're not a, not a bad guy. You, you, you're just a nothing guy that gives her nothing, expects everything, and don't want to do anything about it. I hope I'm wrong about you. I hope you're not this black hole of, 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 of negativity that I see. But that's what you are. And I don't know how you can look in the mirror every day, say you love a woman, and live off a woman, and tear a woman down, and still feel like a man in the morning. Don't, can't see it. Don't know how it happens. Don't know how you live with yourself. I couldn't treat somebody who I didn't love with that amount of disregard. Have somebody I didn't love, but he's taking care of me and paying my bills, and I'm gonna talk nasty about him. Please. Yeah. What does that say about you? Ms. Manning, step on, step forward, move past this. This is an ugly you do not have to bear. And I don't want you to believe that you're better off just because you have a dude. See this little marriage license? See if I had a lighter. We would take it out in flames and we dance around it in a bonfire about freedom for you, but you have the right to feel good about yourself. Don't hook up with a guy that doesn't make you feel good. You with me? Yes, Your Honor. Step on, step forward. This matter is adjourned. Misty, I'm sorry for everything that's happened in our relationship and. I don't want it to end like this. That's never how I wanted it to end, and I do love and care about you, and I do want to work this out. I did, I did everything for Chris, um, but he threw it away like he didn't appreciate it. And like the judge said, he thought I was gonna stay, and I'm not.